The Victorian era was characterized by both increased social mobility and technological achievements. With that, new beauty trends followed and became quite popular. Not all of these beauty trends were good, since many of them were deadly. So how did the women poison themselves with lead, nightshade and mercury in order to look beautiful? Let's find out. Welcome to History Uncovered. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The tuberculosis look in the 1800s, women valued having a very fair complexion and a very pale complexion. Women from the upper classes wanted to demonstrate that they were wealthy enough to avoid working outside in the heat. They desired to have skin that was so light-colored that their facial veins could be seen. Victorians were obsessed with dying, and they even found it appealing when ladies appeared ill or dead. Nodules develop in the lungs as a result of tuberculosis, which was a lethal illness in the Victorian era. These nodules eventually made breathing difficult to the point where the patient passed away. But throughout the Victorian era, women admired the attractiveness that tuberculosis brought on, including the ill person's pale skin, narrow waist, and crimson lips and cheeks. This swiftly turned into a fad, and women started deliberately getting the illness in order to seem lovely. In order to always look as fresh and pale as possible, women were advised to cover their faces in minute amounts of opium derived from lettuce leaves overnight and wash them with ammonia in the morning, according to S.D. Powers The Ugly Girl Papers Women bathed in arsenic baths Women were intended to look younger and more appealing by using arsenic wafers to get rid of freckles and tans. They chose to use arsenic while knowing full well that it was dangerous and addictive in order to fulfill their ideal of beauty. The Victorian-era actress Lola Montez offered far more useful beauty tips than did S.D. Power in the Ugly Girl Papers The Arts of Beauty, or Secrets of a Lady's Toilet is Montez's own book. In her book, she claims that when exploring Bohemia, she discovered that it was normal for women to bathe in and drink from arsenic springs. She acknowledged that it was incredibly risky, but she also praised how gorgeous their skin looked as a result. She also mentioned that ladies would pass away if they did not regularly maintain the habit. Arsenic was widely available in pharmacies throughout the Victorian era and is frequently used as a poison to kill rats. It wasn't just women who thought arsenic would be alluring. It was regarded for many years as a prehistoric form of Viagra that boosted male sexual arousal. Small doses of it produced a euphoria or delirium that rendered people chemically and psychologically addicted. Burning hair A lot of people had curly hair in the 1800s. Tongs used in the early days of curling were heated over a fire. A woman's hair would literally burn off if she used the curling iron too soon after taking it out of the fire because it was so hot. As a result, women in the Victorian era frequently had baldness. Even if they mastered the art of curling their hair, maintaining tight curls all the time put a lot of stress on the scalp. Women attempted numerous tea and pharmaceutical treatments but didn't appear to be able to put two and two together. Even the idea of bathing hair in water and ammonia to promote growth has been floated. Ammonia exposure can lead to skin burns and respiratory issues. Blindness may also result from it. For baldness and eyebrow loss due to fire, SD. Powers recommended a mixture of aromatic tincture and sulfate of quinine in equal parts. Many people did not discover this until it was too late, but she also urged women to keep their curling tongs away from their hair. Blood purification because of the high rate of consumption, tuberculosis, deaths during this time period, society developed an unsettling fixation with death. The purest, most beautiful complexions were observed on patients in the early stages of consumption, according to S.D. Powers in the Ugly Girl Papers. Powers asserted that the frequent blood vomiting experienced by women with consumption was actually their body cleansing them of toxins, leaving them with clear, white skin. She counseled women to eat as little as possible to mimic this. They were able to weaken their bodies while still maintaining just enough strength to function. Powers recommended a diet of cherries for dinner, half an orange for lunch, and a handful of strawberries for breakfast. If you absolutely had to, you could also take some warm soup. Nose machines similar to today, many Victorian men and women were dissatisfied with the noses they were born with. Many businesses produced nose shapers or nose machines years before plastic surgery was even a thing. The soft cartilage of a person's nose was squeezed using these metal devices, which were fastened to their faces. The result was a smaller or more angular nose. The sale of nose shapers persisted over time. 
Tapeworm dieting Victorian women often wore corsets to reduce their waistlines to the barest minimum. Some ladies would purposefully take a tapeworm pill in an effort to lose weight. The woman would take medicines to kill the tapeworm once she finished her diet. However, it was also thought that leaving your mouth open while seated in front of a bowl of milk would encourage the worms to come out on their own. Even if that method worked, humans might choke because tapeworms have been reported to grow as long as 9 meters, 30 feet. A device created by Dr. Myers of Sheffield was intended to get rid of tapeworms from people's stomachs. He would slide a metal cylinder loaded with food down the patient's throat. The tapeworms would be forced inside the cylinder to consume the food if they didn't eat for a few days. Theoretically, he could pull the tube out of the patient and remove the tapeworms from their stomachs once the worms were inside. Sadly, a lot of his patients choking on his device finally passed away. Deadly nightshade eye drops, one of the most lethal plants in existence, is the belladonna. It is potentially lethal to eat a few berries or a leaf. The poison may result in irritable bowel syndrome, rashes, edema, and even blindness in smaller quantities. Despite being aware of these risks, Victorian era women continued to consume this poison. Queen Victoria used belladonna eye drops in her final years to try to get rid of her cataracts. Her pupils dilated, and even though the drops didn't help her condition, her vision still became better. She declined to have surgery, so she kept using the eye drops. Dental Hygiene SD Powers advised people with an acid stomach, or what we now refer to as acid reflux, to ingest a teaspoon of toxic ammonia mixed with a glass of water to freshen their breath and prevent tooth decay in the ugly girl papers. Instead of toothpaste, she advised brushing your teeth twice day with charcoal or burnt bread. The author of Personal Beauty, How to Cultivate and Preserve It in Accordance with the Laws of Health advises using a mouthwash containing cognac, spirits of camphor, and myrrh if one's teeth are starting to rot. Even though camphor spirits are used in vapor rubs to treat illnesses and prevent mortality, swallowing them can cause death. Mercury and lead eyeshadow eye makeup was not worn by elegant Victorian women. Ladies especially focused on their complexions because they wanted to appear as natural as possible and avoid being labeled as fallen women. They didn't wear much eye makeup and instead concentrated on shaping and filling up their brows. They could, however, get away with applying homemade lotions over their eyes to draw attention to them. Some women would mix chilled cream with crushed cochineal insects to create light brown eye makeup. In the Victorian era, eye paint, often known as store-bought eye shadow, was uncommonly worn by people. In contrast, when a prostitute or a daring Victorian woman chose to use eye paint for a special occasion, they were using dangerous chemicals-based cosmetics. These included mercuric sulfide as well as red and white lead used to color the paint. The body was poisoned by these substances, and mercury has even been linked to insane people. Would you participate in these beauty trends if you lived in the Victorian era? Let us know in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.